All right, we are now recording. This is our April 26th Sandbox meeting. Dims, handing off to you. Okay, uh, so I wanted to look at the resubmissions first uh, because you know people went for feedback and they came back to us. So conveyor was one. Um, anybody remember conveyor? Yeah, there it is. So I think some of the feedback that we had here was, uh, there were too many components and there was also the uh, question about um, does conveyor work with um, standard uh, conformant kubernetes um, did, do we did we get an answer from them so i know that they went back and addressed the feedback okay um and it does work with just vanilla kubernetes mm -hmm. i'm not sure that that message got sent out because i personally communicated to them they need to go through the same process as everyone else we don't currently have a process for uh rapid resubmissions mm -hmm. and i thought they would get bumped down to the you know bottom of the list so should we have a policy if we give people feedback that they don't need to start from scratch that'd be my first question um, and secondly i can find that response and send it out to everyone if we're wanting to vote today on it okay so we are not ready so we'll we'll wait for it to happen right um, well, i think i think yeah. if you can send us the response now we could i mean i think we've we've general if if the feedback has answered our questions we've quite often just fast tracked them through like oh, this it makes sense to me i'm not, i'll be okay. happy to look at the response and i mean we i could do I, that from Real your summary quick. of the response, that sounds pretty positive to me. So I'm a, I'm a plus one. Yep. Let me find it real quick. We can come back to it after I do. I gotta. Yeah. Uh, let's come back to it at the end, right? Um, I will stop five minutes before. And so the curve. I think this was another one that came back to us. Uh, does anybody remember curve? Um, they are cloud native database thing. Distributed storage system. Uh, it's used in NetEase. Okay, let's treat it as a new one then um, because we don't remember what we were doing at that time. So uh, let's start with catch. Um, catch. Um, is anybody able, has anybody looked at catch here? It's an application delivery framework. They have CRDs, they have a controller and they operate on Helm charts. Okay, getting started. Um, installing cert manager nginx catch controller uh, from source how do you oh cnab catch uses cnabs to deploy an application from source um matt in your neck of the woods perhaps yes this is one of the few i didn't actually look at Okay. Um, so I'm looking at it now. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. Catch. Um, let's look at uh, some data. Um, how many people are there? What are they doing? So 584 stars. Um, they seem to have ongoing stuff happening, but maybe fewer number of people doing since October. And they don't have any pull request pending. The issues are down low. Um, and who is this packed by? Shipa. Uh, anybody familiar with Shipa.io folks? A little bit. Okay. so. Kelsey is there, Matt is there as advisor. Yeah. Uh, Vivek, I, I remember Vivek from somewhere else. 
and Bruno mm -hmm. is the CEO. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, I mean, it looks sort of like a pass for on top of Kubernetes. Yeah. They have integrations with Terraform, Crossplane, and Pulumi. Okay. Anything concerning folks so far? So it's a single vendor open source uh, from a startup that they are trying to build a community around. Um, so I'm I'm okay with getting this in. Yeah. Can be there's there's nothing surprising here. I mean, it's that platform on top of Kubernetes is a platform yeah. trying to be a PaaS. It's an experiment. Will it work? How will it work out? Right. They're trying to see that. Uh, let's okay. I'll wait for 30 seconds and call for a vote. Okay, Amy, can you please? Look, it's open. I mean, my only, yeah, my only comment is just that there's the number of issues is remarkably low. Right. I've never seen a repo with only eight issues that has 237 closed pull requests. It's just, uh, does kind of suggest that, um, and those are all from themselves. Right. So, they want yeah. to build a community, I guess, um, and they're coming here for that purpose. So, yeah, the only question is whether whether we feel they should have a minimal amount of community before they come. We could take that back to them. Uh, that would be my kind of question mark. Is, is so there... their contributor guide is how to set it up locally and not necessarily mechanisms for contributing back to the project their roadmap only has a few items on it it's not associated with any of their issues so there's no clear way to understand how far they're progressing in the completion of those other than an in progress state at some initiative or higher level um, they don't have uh, regular meetings for a community they have office hours but that's about it and a mailing list i think they need to have a community we haven't asked of the folks, uh, Emily, there. But we haven't required that for Sandbox, right? Yeah, okay. not required for Sandbox per se. I was going to say the same. This, yeah. this wasn't a requirement before. Yeah. So I guess my, my question then is, if the intent is to get the project to be more experimental and, and get folks' attention, if there isn't any mechanism for a con potential contributor to learn how to contribute to the project or how right. to start in that community, how do we expect the project to be successful? Yeah, so uh, I think we have a checklist we ask folks to work on um, when they okay. get into the sandbox. If it's not already there, we can add an item with a checkbox there. Okay. Is that okay, Emily? Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, Amy? No, it was Emily. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I think we should be prescriptive about that if we're questioning ourselves whether or not that's a baseline requirement or just part of their journey to incubation. Because um, I do concur with Emily's point. If they want to grow the community, but you can't be part of that community. It kind of negates mm -hmm. the communication. So I don't know if mm -hmm. we want to send back, but again, we don't require communities today. So I think as far as uh, our policy, we probably need to not oh. hold it back because of that. Another data point, at least for the office hours, the calendar is empty. The meeting notes show two meetings in total, one in March, one in April. Uh, so we can still vote and tell them to come back and fix these things, uh, right? So the vote doesn't mean that we are okay with them. The vote also means that uh, you know we don't support it. Uh, If we, if we look at the list, open. okay. 
But if we look at the list of contributors and stars, it seems to be more well established than a lot of things we have looked in the past in the sandbox. Correct. It doesn't mean that we should approve it. More, I'm just saying, yeah. More well funded. It's a startup, but I don't think it yeah. has a project. I, I think the, the question of whether it's actually actually look open for fundamental contribution outside the company is unclear to me. Okay, um, uh, let's let's see what they say here, right? Uh, we are strong believers. Um, would like to get more exposure. We believe see a neutral ground uh, project to further flourish. And, would like to have an inclusive project, low barrier to contribution, and adoption that the CNCF provides. So they want to do the work once they begin here. That's what they are saying. And the question is, are we willing to do that? Well, if th this is work that they don't need from the CNCF to try to ask for contributions and make it easy for people to come on board to, right? And if they really want that, then why don't they start doing it now? Why do they have to wait for it to come into the CNCF to ask for contributions? That's not one of our benefits, right? The benefit of joining the CNCF isn't now you can get contributions from others. Right. I think it's just getting visibility to a wider community that they may not have had before. I don't think yeah. it's they're holding off on that, but we can certainly ask for clarification. But if if visibility is part of the intention, isn't that arguably even a little bit lower than sandbox, like a runway or something? Uh, so as far as I remember, uh, you know, till we till the last one call, we were allowing such projects to come in, and during the process of setting up their sandbox uh, in an area and trying to pitch to existing CNCF folks, uh, that's when they would do these kinds of things. Um, if you're going to change, then we'll have to go back and change all our documentation to say, hey, uh, now we this is a higher bar that we are asking you to do before we can let you in sandbox. So according to present rules, I think we are OK there. And what I would say is, um, uh, Amy has a checklist that she works with each of the uh, sandbox folks. So we could add more items in that check checkbox, uh, you know, list of checkboxes. Okay, we are burning up time on this. So I'm gonna call for a vote and, you know, fall where, where it may fall, okay? Okay, votes, votes are open, go ahead, please. All right, this one's not included um, based on just voting to come on through. Mm -hmm. So um, I yeah. think we can move on. Um, okay. Let them Thank, you. Reply. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, build a community a little bit more, um, you know, start doing things they, uh, in, before uh, they apply next. Thank you. So, container structure test. Uh, this is a submission from Google folks. Uh, they have actually, you know, there's nobody working on it anymore. So they want to, they want us to take that, take this over. They, they uh, want to throw it over the fence and say, here you go, CNCF, deal with it. Yeah. And I'm not comfortable with this. No, me neither. Yeah. Um, it needs to be defined, need, need help with this. Um, I'm not aware of any. So it's one person trying to, you know, shift it to us. Um, widely used, Google maintains sole ownership, um, clean way to, this is worse than the previous one. Do we all agree? So uh, so we're gonna, uh, let's call for a vote and say no officially, okay? Uh, oh, uh, Amy didn't start 
thing. But sure. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I can... You should see a message from Amy. <laughs> I can pick oh, it up oh, from oh, where oh. we last left off. Um, not included. Okay. Moving on. Thank you. Okay. Take a part. Okay. <laughs> open function. Uh, I keep reading this as open fast because you know Alex Ellis is doing open fast. Uh, so open function. Uh, I, I think it's what is it, Tencent or uh, QSphere, right? It's QSphere. Um, so, uh, anyone took a look at this one? This... I did. So this one is. I mean, it's it's a fast functions as a service, right? Yeah. Um, It just seemed like a prototypical functions as a service that there, somebody else was trying to build a competitor to open fast. That's exactly what I thought. I'm like open function. It's a competitor to open fast. Right. Um, and somebody's trying to make it work. Uh, I mean, I've got opinions on it, right. As far as their experiment is going, uh, most of their documentation targets people like operators and those operating it, um, which doesn't really target the end users who are going to create the functions. So I'm not sure if they're really going after their target audience, but then again, this is just me judging the way they're trying to get there. Um, you know, people are having a very hard time making functional phases on top of Kubernetes and getting them out there. Um, and so I wonder about their approach targeting so much with operators rather than trying to get all the end users who want to use it up and listening to that audience. But otherwise it's, it's just a faz. see some activity so issues pull requests yeah. contributors they seem to be ongoing activity for sure yep i mean they've got yeah. contributions it's being actively developed and worked okay do but, we need but i think open function and kubi sphere are two totally different project right we should look at an open function project right yeah, this one is open function. Uh, we didn't look at Cubesphere. Oh, I see. Okay, Cubesphere was another one that I was clicking on just to see who, who was there. So, okay, okay, got it, got it. So, okay, pull request one, issues 22, insights, contributors, um, and there's ongoing stuff. Yeah. It's basically two people, though. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, a year, it's only a year old, which is kind of new. There's other projects we're gonna we might look at today that have even less time. There's one that's proposed that a month after development started, they submitted to the sandbox. We, we, yeah, I mean historically we've rejected almost all those ones. Okay. Actually, all no, sorry. Yeah, all, yes. Basically, we've rejected pretty much all of those unless there's been a very strong reason why people need it to be in CNCF to collaborate. Okay. Okay. So we feel they are not ready to come back later, right? Is it because it's so new? I think, I mean, it's, it's new in a space where there's been a lot of other um, approaches have had a lot, have had difficulty getting traction and sustaining. Um, actually, I might uh, I might ask Alex if he wants to submit OpenFast. Just talking of because OpenFast is actually made, getting user traction now. Um, it's taken a long time. Um, okay, let's uh, come back to this it's, one. It's, there's only one pull request, uh, and how many issues were there? Uh, Twenty-two open, thirty-nine closed. Well, they had 200 closed pull requests. So. Oh. Yeah, 200 closed. I don't, I don't know. The, the other argument is if you look at, uh, like, they are one year old and they do have like 480 stars and a bunch of forks and right. few contributors. So it, it's not, like yeah. it doesn't have attention, right? I think their approach is interesting. 
especially focusing on operators, particularly since the majority of our projects have heavily focused on developers. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen a lot more use cases, uh, particularly as of late, for serverless capabilities as it relates to the operational deployment and production of services, maintenance, monitoring, all of that. So they're, in my mind, I see them kind of in alignment with that and they, they've started to realize, and maybe the rest of the community has as well because they are so young with so much attention and activity. Okay, so let's start a vote unless any other comments are coming in. That one passes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So next one is Teller. There are actually two line items for Teller. Um, There's a duplicate. Um, it's from Spectral Ops. And what ended up happening was Spectral Ops got bought out by somebody else, uh, Checkpoint. Um, so, and this happened in the first Q1 sometime a couple of months ago, a month or two ago. Uh, and the change because of that? What does it affect their submission? Uh, so they resubmitted. Uh, let me find the second one. Uh, the, that might have more recent information. This is number five. This is number twenty-six. Um, so secret management tool. Tell our uh, and this was three twenty-one. So definitely newer um, than the previous one. Uh, they're yeah, having trouble with the. Oof, oh, it's all collapsed into one line. I can't. Oh, hold on. Let me fix that. Give me a hot second. Yeah. That, that should not be how that is. They, they should all be wrapped. All right. Refresh and try it again. Yeah. There you go. Much better. Okay. Um, benefits from Teller as infrastructure component. Commercial, there is a commercial solution. So, yeah, again, it's a startup that got bought out and then. Like to contribute back. So uh, let me go back to the previous one to see if there was any differences. Okay. Uh, Universal Secret Manager. Mm, security. So this I like this more. project. You like it? I do. And the reason why is because we don't really have a lot of projects in this space. So I, I personally feel that this is something is needed. Um, when I looked at the project a few months ago, uh, their roadmap was fairly robust and well built out. Okay. Um, they're, they're somewhat active. They are not the most active, but it looks like they've taken the time to actually think through all the potential, uh, not necessarily competition in the space, but other CNCF projects that they can integrate with as well as commercial solutions that they could potentially integrate with. So they under, I feel like they understand their space relatively well and that there is an appetite for this. Okay. Is, there, is there an overlap with what SOPS is doing in Mozilla? Looks kind of similar. There was some discussion about SOPS when we were talking about Flux the other day as well. That is not necessarily well maintained. So this could be um, yeah, yeah, it seems similar, yes. uh, Ricardo. Yeah, and there, there was this discussion that SOPS is having an issue of uh, not having enough maintainers, and uh, if Mozilla would actually donate the project to the CNCF eventually or something. So I think it's a nice, nice addition in this space. Uh, What's the so, so? Can I just understand what that commercial model is? I, let me go look at that. Yeah, it was Doppler.com, D-O-P-P-L-E-R. D-O-P-P-L-E-R. Uh, remove the O, or the I, remove the I, yeah. Sync environment variables at scale, secret ops platform. Okay, so value added more. But, but, but is it, uh, uh, just want to understand if it's, if it's, 
how the how the value add works is it open core is it on the side is it a service because we i think that um we don't want to be in a situation where it's a single company product that isn't you know for example isn't shipping features into open source because they compete with the commercial thing if it's a if it's a anyone can host it on the same yeah basis, that's, that's absolutely fine but i just trying to understand if it's like if it's a HashiCorp fault situation where it's it wouldn't be acceptable as a cncf project so i have a feeling that we would have had that question before they got bought out not now uh, because they are they already you know cashed out so to say well no i don't think it makes any difference that they're being bought to right right to, for the for the same product then yeah i just like it uh, okay let, let me go oops you yeah, know, I, 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 that's a good question, right? Is what's the difference between Doppler and Teller? Um, here is, is the thing, right? Like, do we ask that question before? Sorry, Aaron. Um, go ahead. I just made sure we're asking if one is upstream and one is downstream, and if there's a community behind it. Is, are we just clarifying that? It's not unusual to have this kind of. Yeah. The thing I, I really want to know is, is this open core where you've got a core set that you've open sourced and then you've got a bunch of additional functionality and you're selling it through it, but you're not going to upstream features, right? Because you keep it in your proprietary version and then you don't allow that stuff into the upstream community. How, how do we, have we addressed that before? I mean, we, it's the we, HashiCorp we've model. We, we've never accepted a project on that basis. I think we'd have a lot of reservations yeah. about it. Yes. Yeah. Why we would need to be. Player. Um, in in most cases, it's all the projects we've had is very straightforward. That you know, people are selling the upstream directly, or they and their commercial products are usually adjacent in a clearly defined way, um, and so there's no conflict. So we 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 haven't had so we haven't had someone submit on that basis. But it's just a case where it's just a little bit unclear, and it may well be that it's fine like that, but it's just not. So I posted a link from the co-founder at Spectral. It says that they built an open source alternative to Doppler called Teller for companies that are security and privacy conscious and are concerned about their secrets, data, and vendor lock-in. Oh, did we misread that? Uh, it, it was not in the submission. It, it, you know, uh, Emily found this one. Yeah. Oh, the Doppler is the similar one. It is in the submission on line 26. Right, but this yeah, this isn't theirs. Okay, yeah, so this is open source. I got it. They're not the same company. Okay, my confusion. Okay. So okay. it lists the unique features down there. Yeah. Okay, so it's not an open core model. The two different organizations. Okay. Makes sense to me. Okay, so let's vote, uh, Amy. Five, we are 30 minutes, 28 minutes. Sealer. Um, Sealer, is this Other Alibaba? Questions? Moving on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sealer, Alibaba. Um, Harry, do you have have you seen this project before? Sealer.co? Yeah, I've seen that before, but I'm not very familiar with that. Okay. So from what I understood, uh, it's like bundling everything into something bigger than a um, Docker image. So uh, it's easy to, um, all the dependencies are baked into the image itself. So you don't have to worry about pulling things from different places. So uh, so from Kubernetes, copy MySQL, read this WordPress and apply everything in one shot. So this is what a cube file looks like. And you can create an image out of it. And you can put it into some kind of a registry. 
it's probably OCI. Yeah, it looked like a way to package up a Kubernetes cluster with its workloads into yep. a single unit, stick that unit into an OCI registry, then pull that down and re, you know, start it up again many times. Mm -hmm. So 1.1 1 .1 stars, uh, contributors, uh, things are happening. Uh, three pull requests, uh, how many closed? Um, Oh, 766. Um, so they are doing stuff. And this is from Alibaba. So, uh, Harry, uh, previously, have we had any issues with Alibaba drone projects or uh, everything was okay? Uh, I don't recall previous issues. Um, Justin, do you remember any? No, I mean, I think they've been. They've yeah, they've submitted several projects. I'm right. Sure. I think, um, yeah, they've done quite a lot of things. I can't remember exactly which ones, but I've had, but not, I don't, nothing I remember being a problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, any other things to look for, look at? Sealer.cool. Hey, where did I go? Yeah. Okay. Build, deliver, run user defined clusters in one command. Exactly what you said, Matt. Okay. Okay, let's call a vote then. Yes. Uh, Volcano was from Huawei to Erin. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, vote for data plus Thanks. one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is cluster net. Okay. The sealers included. Moving on. Thank you. Ooh. Okay, this one is cluster net. I can tell you it is cluster net. Okay, they have a long project description multiple clusters as easily as visiting the internet general purpose system uh, a multi-cluster manager tool yeah and if i remember right they have like an agent kind of thing let me find get to the point of cluster net cluster net okay um multi-cluster management, learn more, Kubernetes native, I remember seeing, yeah. Okay, so you can run your Kubernetes cluster anywhere and they will magically make it into a single um, Kubernetes cluster. And they are doing it by adding agents that run in each of the child clusters and they'll have, in the parent cluster, they'll have the Kube API server, which is an aggregated one, um yeah so i like this project for one its ability to manage multiple clusters centrally is one i have some potential concerns about how they're going about doing that and that they're, it's not entirely clear from their documentation so like as they move forward i think having a security review at a much later date when they're slightly more mature would be truly beneficial one of the things in particular that i like about it is it's all about ownership through groups mm -hmm. which is from their documentation a nice call out but I'd like to see them potentially look more at roles and other forms of ownership management. So I think there, there's a lot of potential here. Yep. Yeah, and I'm always for um, projects like this where we are trying to stitch things into a single cluster. Uh, so this is a, a decent effort at it. it. It's a one person project essentially, which concerns me. Like this is a big task. Um, so this person, uh, Deesh, I don't know how to say his name, sorry. Um, so he helps out in the Kubernetes too. Uh, and he does a bunch of things uh, for us on the Kubernetes side. So he's been there for a long time. So 
So I kind of I, I trust this person, but I don't know anybody else. Uh, well, the, none really. of the other ones have, no one else has really but, contributed any significant amount. I mean, 11 commits, it's negligible. Yeah. So it's, it's a one person, it's a one person project, which is a little bit concerning to me. Yeah. For something as big as multi-cluster. But also in the submission, there's no mention of the cluster API, I think, on the projects compared to. Yeah. There's things like uh, KubeFed, which are basically dead since a long time. And open cluster management, I think, as well. But... So looking at their contributing guide, it doesn't look like they have any community building in place, but they do have feel free to get participated if you found a bug and requested a new feature. But that's it. Yeah, I think uh, it's from Tencent, right? So. I, but I don't know why other Tencent folks are not doing as much here. Well, Tencent also has this virtual kubelet implementation that deploys Kubernetes clusters behind. So it yeah. seems to be competing products. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, we can vote. And, um, you know, the, I, the, the concerns are about number of people. So uh, it, it, we, we can say, uh, come back later with uh, more people, more community, uh, especially contributors from Tencent, I guess. Looking at their roadmap, it sounds like beginning of 2023 maybe would be ideal for them. They've got some stuff on their roadmap, um, one that hasn't been updated in over a year, and two that would probably be fairly significant Mm -hmm. uh, that's a decent feedback to go with. So let's call for a vote and give them the feedback. All right, not included. What kind of feedback do you want to like, like sum that one down to like a sentence for me? Um, uh, come back, come back later. <laughs> Okay. All right. Come I will, back I will later with more with more uh, people who are act active in the project, okay. um, actively doing PRs and reviews and uh, issues. Okay. Active community requested. Moving on. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Aryan. If I remember right, this is a Israeli startup. Uh, Tarian. So my notes on this one are, it has a Falco connector for active threat protection. It's less active than some of the other projects, but it does have a roadmap. Um, it looks like it's one person that's doing most of the heavy lifting within the project. Okay. Uh, so same. It's also, uh, I, I wonder, it requires Falco. So I was wondering, should it be a sub project to Falco, potentially not a standalone project? Yeah. Uh, let's give them that feedback. Go talk to Falco first and then come back to us. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, do we need to vote on this, Amy? Oh, moving on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cubescape. So this, oh, that's Cubesphere. I, like, I, I keep getting confused between these two. Okay, uh, Emily, any idea on this? Uh, this is also testing securely. It's a security CI CD integration with configuration checks for CISA and other best practices within the community, which is nice. Um, this kind of helps support some of the auditability requirements that we've started to see being asked um, of adopters. The question is, is whether or not people actually want it. Like, I know the ask is coming from auditors within the community, but. Right. Uh, I think they use some eBPF or something, or uh, one of the other projects that does eBPF. Does it use Falco too? Uh, not Falco. Oops. 
No, it's not W, it's E. No. Uh, how, what's the engine that they use? Um, or did they do their own engine? Uh, let's look at the code map. It's OPA. Okay, yeah. See, Rego, that's what I was going to say. Rego, uh, Rego based. Uh, yes. Well, let's skip save. Um, docs. Maybe I should look at their website. So Rego based policies is what I remember seeing when I was looking. Oops. Opa. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Anyone? I guess it's very early. It's uh, uh, significantly under it. As August it was great. It started last August. Um, they do say. Uh, on that it's uh, um, one of the, the fastest growing Kubernetes tools among developers, but I don't really see any evidence of that, to be honest. I look at the number of releases, 119 releases. <laughs> they do churn it out for sure, and they do have they, 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 they haven't hit 200 commits yet. Armosec. Okay, what feedback would we give them, Justin? I mean, I think that um, <laughs> they're trying. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're trying. I, I would, I would keep trying. Come back in six months. Okay. I think that's fair. Sounds good to me. True. We can move yeah. on. See, five point six stars, two hundred and eighty forks. Not not shabby. Okay. Uh, you, you don't know what you don't want to know where you can buy you get up <laughs> stars from on the black market nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Hey, they are a security company. They can do whatever they want, right? <laughs> no, but I mean I I I it does show some you know, it does show some signs of yeah. interest, but it's very early. Uh, so here's what I would say. Uh, I would tell them to go to like the C, uh, C, uh, tax security and SIG security, and, you know, get some promotion that way and uh, get some people, uh, collect some people and then come back um, next time. So I would recommend they definitely should talk to security tag, especially since they're going to be releasing the security controls catalog that has a lot of these mappings. So it might yeah. be beneficial for them to take advantage of that content. Okay. So let's tell them that, Amy, please. Security, six security. We'll figure yeah. it out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lag Lagoon is a reapplication. Oh, okay. No. It does say Docker Compose. Okay, Justin, have you seen this one? No. Use Lagoon. Uh, contributors. This they've been there for a while. Um, oof. Okay, not too much activity. This sufficient number of. Um, the, Wow, 1823 closed. 378 open. 840 closed. Developer focused application delivery platform for. It's Kubernetes. another pass. Okay. 
uh, locally Helm charts and kind. Lagoon core remote. We have had a kind of uh, reluctance to host past projects historically. <laughs> um, Amazing. Amazing. Amazing is the company, I think. Yeah, I mean, they don't say it's a PaaS, but it's web application delivery. And a bunch of their examples are using Drupal. And I think with one is uh, WordPress. So they're using, it's all about deploying your web apps. See, they've got configuring their examples, Drupal. Yeah. And how do you deploy in and get going with uh, Drupal here? Okay, this is a pass. The pass. So yeah. they have an open issue on uh, allowing SSH keys to be shared between users and getting that fixed. <laughs> okay, um, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> it, it might be, yeah, an issue. Yeah, I, the, the whole reason why they have it as a ticket is because it's overcomplicating the API and not necessarily for the security implications of doing that. In fact, it looks like it currently allows them to search for all SSH keys for all users before deleting one. That's huh. concerning. Uh, it. They've also had some uh, slippage in the past 10 months about the work that they're getting done. They have a, like, they have a roadmap in place and looking through it, they're, they're getting a lot of things done. Um, uh, I'm just not a hundred percent sure whether or not they're ready. They also have an open issue on researching the usage of security contacts and pod security policies for Kate's clusters. And they're expecting that to be released in 3.0, but they haven't even hit 2.0. Yeah, the last time I see a note from September 14, 2021 from Amy, uh, reapply in six months showing more connection to cloud native was what we told them. Because I think at that time it was just Docker Compose. And now they've added more. So they still have um, ongoing work for replacing uh, OpenShift with Kubernetes objects. I, I would I would say push them off another six months at least, maybe a year with the rate that they're going. That sounds good to me. Um, do we need to take a vote? Mm, no, that seems pretty clear. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Okay, Matos. Uh, the, I think the first thing that I noticed on this one was it's a uh, Python-based project. Uh, anybody have issues with Python-based projects? So, not much activity. It's too, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I noticed is that the company, it's a company, Cloud Matos. Yep. So Cloud Matos has a project called Matos that they want to open source. And mm -hmm. that just flagged a thing of, are, are there going to be trademark issues with the naming here and yeah. then passing the name off? Yeah, we work with them on legal side uh, uh, to rebrand for sure. Um, so that should it's, not be a problem as such. It's only got 19 commits, so it's a... So too young from me yeah, yeah it's, it needs to they need to agreed way too young okay so amy uh reapply in six months thing. yeah yeah perfect at okay. least a year i'd say not not even six months it's like uh, uh six months is the one that we currently tell people that is actually within timing and given how our backlog has been rolling it I, I, I'm, I'm going to say minus one to them in six months, regardless of okay. whether they come back. It, uh, it, it needs to be at least a year. It's like okay, uh, it's so significant community growth. Come back in one year. Uh, let's put the date also. Okay. Uh, so this one, uh, I, uh, I I want to call time because you said you wanted to go back to conveyor. 
Yes, uh, let's just finish this one. Uh, ah, yes, yes, it, this is very easy. Basically, what we need to tell them is to go talk to Kubernetes SIG release and then come back uh, because it's, uh, you know, it's it's essentially taking the community supported uh, from one year to longer time frame, And so let them find out if there is any opportunity to work with uh, the Kubernetes SIG release folks. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, and this one, then one after that, CAPC, uh, we should tell them to go talk to C cluster lifecycle. They already have things in progress on the Kubernetes side. I don't know why they ended up, maybe they did it here first and then they went to talk uh, to Kubernetes folks. So basically, yeah, we can tell them to go uh, continue the conversation there and come back to us if those things don't work. Okay. Sounds good. Um, uh, correct me, did I miss Matos? Uh, we just told Matos one year. Thank you. Okay. Uh, con conveyor. Um, okay. Do you, do you have that email, Erin? I don't. I asked them for a final draft and I never got it. So. Oof, okay. Um, uh, I, I think we need to, again, pick good. it up one more time later, next time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, I, from, from the verbal description, I, I think I'm okay with it. Um, would we, do you want to vote without the actual email? What do folks think? Yeah, I'm not comfortable. So let's wait okay. for the e e thing uh, over okay. email, uh, okay. please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, any other projects anybody wants to poke at? We have five minutes. Clusterpedia, Turnbuckle, Open Cost, Open Feature, Hydra, DevStream, Exa, Teller. We talked about Yam, Cubray. Okay, I give okay. you five minutes back. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, everyone. We